Today we're discussing this, Intel's new 18-core i9-10980XE. Of course, the word new deserves a huge asterisk next to it because the 10980XE isn't much different from the 9980XE, which wasn't much different from the 7980XE. That's at least when we're talking about the hardware because spec-wise there is a minimal bump, it's not much, but the interesting thing here is the price, which has been cut in half. Whereas the 9980XE launched at an eye-watering $2,000 US, the 10980XC launches for a $1,000 base MSRP. And this actually makes for an interesting discussion because previously the 9980XC was out of reach for a lot of people who were building perhaps a mainstream workstation. But now with the $1,000 price tag, people who are considering the 3950X may also be considering the 10980XE. So today we're going to look at the performance of the two and talk about which one is going to be the better choice choice for an under $1,000 CPU. So before we dive right into the benchmarks, let's first break down these enormous price cuts from Intel because quite frankly, they didn't have much choice. If they had left their current 18 core CPU priced at $2,000 US, well, it'd be going up against AMD's new 32 core Threadripper 3970X. To summarize my testing on that one, the 3970X is just an absolute beast. The name is totally appropriate because this thing just rips and tears through rendering and well-optimized workloads. The closest competitor to the 10980XE then from AMD side, oddly enough, is a mainstream socket CPU, the 16 core Ryzen 3950X. Now, although it's priced $250 less than the 10980XE, the performance here is a lot closer than you think. The price difference of compatible motherboards is also significantly lower for the 3950X, so there are potentially more savings there too. Now, what's different with the 10980XE? Well, it's the same architecture on 14 nanometer, but the max turbo frequency sees a nice bump, but more on that in a second. Memory capacity has been increased to 256 gigabytes, and we get an extra four PCI Express lanes. Of course, though, the price is the real change here and really changes the context of this CPU. Halving the price is really no sweat. All right, now, although the single core boost frequency has been bumped up by a few hundred megahertz, the all core turbo frequency is exactly the same as the 9980XE. It's identical, I mean identical. In AVX workloads like Blender, we see the all core frequency drop to 3.3 gigahertz across all cores. And in a workload like Cinebench, it sustains 3.8 gigahertz. So apart from the 4.6 to 4.8 gigahertz single core boost clock, performance here should be pretty much even with the 9980XE. So let's just jump right into production workload benchmarks first and see how the performance and value stacks up against the $750 16 core Ryzen 3950X. In Cinebench R20 with all cores enabled, the Ryzen 3950X is 5.5% faster than the 10980XE at stock. And when both of them are overclocked to 4.4 gigahertz, the 3950X maintains a 3% lead. Now I did have some issues overclocking the 10980XE and even at 4.4 gigahertz and 1.2 volts, the system would frequently restart and trip during benchmarks. I'll figure out why that is in the meantime, but for now, this is the only mention of overclocking for the 10980XE. Moving to a single thread, the 10980XE is about on par with the 9900K, but in this benchmark, the cheaper 3950X is still faster by a 5% margin. Now, Blender showed the 10980XE a little over 8% faster than the Ryzen 9 3950X, and given that the 10980XE is running at just 3.3 gigahertz in this benchmark, it does have a lot more potential performance in the tank when you factor in overclocking. So the performance margins are there versus the 3950X, but keep in mind it is two $150 more expensive, not even accounting for the motherboard. Looking at video file ingesting and the creation of proxy files in Premiere Pro, the 3950X saves us about 13% of time over the higher core count 10980XE. When we look at export times though, the 10980XE is slightly faster, a 2.5% margin here. If you are a heavy Premiere Pro user, the Ryzen 3950X is a really solid choice here. Even stepping up to the Threadripper 3970X doesn't make much sense given the 
huge price increase. That is unless you are rendering footage all day, every day. In V-Ray, a CPU ray tracing benchmark, which gradually resolves an image, the 10980XE is ahead of the 3950X by a little over 21%. That is a worthwhile margin, although for a 33% price increase on the CPU alone, it really is up to you if this application is that important for paying an extra 33%. 7-Zip was quite promising for the 10980XE when it comes to file compression, a 17% lead over the Ryzen 3950X, but when we do switch to decompression, the lead shifts, and we now have the 3950X leading by 13%. So really the results here are neck and neck between the two when you factor in both compression and decompression. We're going to take a quick look at gaming here, although these two CPUs should never be bought solely for gaming. It's easy to understand though a use case where someone leverages them for rendering during the day and then for gaming at night. So starting with Far Cry 5, for whatever reason, this title didn't perform too well on the 10 XE. And if you didn't know this already, gaming performance on high core count CPUs can be extremely unpredictable. The 32 core 3970X, for example, is pretty much unplayable in this title at the moment. Overall though, the 3950X here leads by about 13% on average. Battlefield 5, on the other hand, played slightly better on the 10980XE with the lowest 1% of frames around 6% ahead of the 3950X, despite the 3950X taking a slight lead on average. Project Cars 2 is one title that I'd like to highlight seeing as it utilizes AVX instruction sets and as we saw in Blender this brings the core frequency of the 10980XE down to 3.3 gigahertz so this rather poor result for the 10980XE could be potentially fixed with overclocking where performance would be likely brought a lot closer to the 3950X which otherwise leads by 12% at stock. World War Z played pretty smoothly on both CPUs with no hiccup, although performance is better on the 3950X, which performs as good as a 9900K in this title. Similar story in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the 10980XE is by no means bad, it certainly can double as a gaming CPU, but the 3950X here leads again by a little over 3% when both are stock. So while overclocking the 3950X doesn't lead to much of a performance increase in gaming, I believe that the 10980XE does have some performance headroom left in the tank if brought up to say 4.4 or 4.5 gigahertz, and there you would likely bring the gaming performance a lot closer to the 3950X. For both processors at stock though, the 3950X is around 5% faster on average in gaming. So the drastic price cuts for Intel's 18 core CPU were totally necessary and after taking a look at those benchmarks, it's pretty easy to understand why. If Intel didn't slash the prices in half here, the 10980XE would be up against the Threadripper 3970X, which as we've seen is just an absolute behemoth when it comes to brute multi-threading power. So the i9-10980XE at stock and for that matter, the 9980XE and the 7980XE at stock trades blows with AMD's new Ryzen 16 core 3950X. So realistically, if both of those CPUs were the same price, at $750, either CPU would be a great choice. It really could swing either way. The problem though is that they're not the same price and although this video is titled best CPU under $1000, we just can't discount that $250 difference in favor of the Ryzen 3950X. The fact of the matter is that seeing as performance is so close between them and there is still that $250 price margin, the 10980XE really is still too expensive. Not to mention that the 10980XE requires a much more expensive motherboard pairing and requires a lot more power to overclock. So the best CPU under $1,000 could be either one of them. And to be fair to Intel, the new 18 core offering does make much more sense than it did previously. But my honest recommendation to you guys is to go for the Ryzen 3950X. Whether you want to save that $250 or put it towards your system for more memory, more storage, or perhaps a faster GPU, that is totally valid. At the end of the day, the 10980XE is not really a new CPU at all, and the drastic price cuts, although very appreciated from a consumer's perspective, they're just not enough to compete with the Ryzen 3950X. So I think that about sums it up. Uh, a huge thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.